Today, I'm going to go over why I think BioHarvest is quite possibly the most undervalued stock in the whole stock market. Now, I'm not a financial advisor and I definitely don't claim to be, so remember to do your own research before you invest your own hard-earned money into it. Without further ado, let's get straight into the analysis. So what exactly is BioHarvest? Well, BioHarvest is a biotech company that takes the cells of any plant and any part of that plant and they multiply it in a bioreactor, which is this big plastic bag, over the course of a three weeks to get their desired yield amount that they're looking for. This is already crazy fast, considering that cannabis takes anywhere from seven weeks to about seven months to grow. And that's not even including grapes that are annually every year. So originally how I found this company was actually me just trying to find whatever marijuana stock that I could look into to invest in because I believe marijuana is going to be a massive industry in the coming years with projected revenues of over a hundred billion worldwide. I just thought to myself, okay, you know, the big players, they're a little too obvious. I need to find one where it comes to cost savings and efficiency. And then that's when I came across the company Canna V Cell. Now at one point Canna V Cell was a company that was separate entirely from BioHarvest. It wasn't up until March of this year that the two companies merged because they thought that it would make sense for a shareholder perspective to have one company to invest in as opposed to two. Both used the same technology and both had the same brilliant minds behind it. Even though you've never heard of this company, this company has been around for a while. It was founded in 2013 and it's had research done before that as well. This company has over 11 process patents with four pending in five different countries. They are the only industrial plant cell growth company in the whole world. So when I heard that they had 11 process patents with four pending on this technology, I just had to invest. So I am in this company, but not all the way in because, well, the market is quite volatile now with the whole pandemic going on. However, this company is a little bit risky because its revenues are small as it's been in the research and development stage for a very long time and is just recently starting to scale up their operations. So don't expect to get rich quick on this one, but it has a high probability of doing so. Now this company is divided into two categories. We have their superfruits division and we have their marijuana division. As of right now, they're only selling their Vinia product, which is in their superfruits division. If you were like me, when I found out about Vinia first, you're probably thinking to yourself, what the hell is Vinia and why should I care? Well, Vinia is their grape supplement that you can buy, which is based off the French paradox. So what the French paradox means is that French people, they have really fatty diets, but because of their moderate consumption of red wine every day, which means about two to three glasses, they have one of the best heart health rates in all the world. And that's due to the compound called Piseed Resveratrol that's commonly found in red grapes. Now this compound is very special in the fact that it can expand one's arteries by up to 148%, which can allow for more blood blood flow and less blockage of the arteries. This is already huge news because heart diseases and heart complications are the number one cause of death in the whole world. And this is a great preventative measure against that. Now they're gonna go two routes with Vinia. The first route is they're gonna make it a nutraceutical that you can buy on the shelves of any grocery store or pharmaceutical store. But what I'm most excited about is they're gonna incorporate Vinia into consumer packaged goods. And why I'm so excited about this is that when they evenly distribute Vinia in a product on the shelves in a grocery store, they can extend the shelf life of that product by almost three months. And this is massive because spoilage is a very big problem when it comes to items on grocery shelves and especially in pantries and households worldwide. Not only does this give companies a great excuse to incorporate Vinia into as many products as they can, but it also gives them viable healthy benefits that they can put on their packaged goods. And that is what consumers are dying for nowadays 
is to eat something and know they're eating something healthy. Now Vinia is not the only superfruit they've been working on. They have two more in the pipeline that they're going to be releasing as pills that you can take and also they're going to be incorporated into consumer goods as well. We have one that's being released in 2022 called Olivia. That's going to help with regular cholesterol levels. And they have a third one coming out in 2023 called Palmia, which is based on pomegranates. And that's going to help with anti-inflammatory benefits. And with all of these, they come with zero sugar, zero calories, and in the case of Vinia, zero percent alcohol and that's just the superfruits division just wait until we get into the cannabis because the cannabis is even more of a game changer the costs are super significant because it's way cheaper than any indoor grown cannabis out there. Now, when I initially found out about Cannabis Cell, they projected that it would be about $100 to produce a kilogram of cannabis. But later on in a newer investor presentation from BioHarvest, they projected that it would be about $200 to produce a kilogram. And that is still a staggering amount of savings compared to the $1,500 that it would take a traditional indoor grower to produce a kilogram of cannabis. The drawback about them producing cannabis this way is it's not the typical flower people are used to. Instead, they'll be getting a, a fine powder that is smokable, but you know, people usually probably won't turn to smoking it. In fact, its main use will be in edible form or pharmaceuticals in the future. Something I've learned from watching countless hours of YouTube videos is that it's almost impossible to get a hundred percent accuracy on every cannabis plant that you ever grow and that is where BioHarvest will completely dominate the medical cannabis market because it is a hundred percent consistent all the time because they constantly multiply the same cell over and over and over again and so that way there is no discrepancies it is always a what they coined as a term fingerprint consistency. Now this may sound like GMO to you, but this company constantly claims that it's non-GMO. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. We haven't even gone over how much land this is gonna take. It's gonna take absolutely just a fraction of the land that greenhouses, or sorry, greenhouse growers take to grow cannabis on a daily basis. The current chairman of BioHarvest was quoted saying, uh, In a room this size, I can do at least one ton per year. So 100 square meter would be 1.8 tons per year of capacity. Just to put in perspective for you, the Aurora Sky facility in Edmonton, Alberta, that is a 800,000 square foot facility, and that can grow about 100 tons of cannabis per year. Now, if BioHarvest had that same size facility, they could make 14,400 tons per year. That is just mind blowing. That is a crazy amount of cannabis that anyone can produce. And that's just one facility. The land costs are just so down, and so is the energy, so is the water, and so is the labor costs. Just think about the amount of revenue this company can make and the amount of profits they can make just from that alone. It's just, there's just so much good things about this company that it just, oh, I love it so much. So basically they can bring down the costs by 70% of traditional growers while massively increasing the output of how much they can produce. One of the biggest risks to cannabis farming is that Crop contamination is a real thing, and if one crop is contaminated, that contamination can spread to the rest of the crops, and at that point you have a whole crop failure, and who even knows how much money has just been wasted. And that problem is avoided entirely because everything is grown aseptically, and what that means is that there's no chance for outside contamination to contaminate the cells. And also, this is even a bigger point to drive home here, is that none of this needs pesticides, none of it needs fertilizers, so basically, I don't know if they can claim this, but it's essentially organic. 
Now all this sounds fine and dandy, but have they really produced that much? And the answer is no, because for the longest time they've only had a two-ton production facility in their own headquarters, as they've been selling Vinia as a product since 2016. Now the numbers have been small for revenue, but just recently they announced a partnership with Sugart Israel for a 20-ton production facility in Israel with a provision in that contract to extend the 20 tons to make it 60 tons. So unfortunately, this factory probably won't be done up until the third quarter of next year. And this factory will, as far as I know, be exclusively for superfruits only. And with their 20 ton factory up and running, they'll be turning their two ton factory into a marijuana one. Something I haven't mentioned before is the fact that they're going ahead with their superfruits, but as of right now, they're still working on the research and development of their marijuana. As of September 16th, they revealed to investors that they recently raised $3.3 million to continue the R&D of their marijuana research. Now, they say it's to scale up their bioreactors to produce the marijuana, but my speculation is that they're trying to produce water-soluble cannabis. Now, I can't prove any of this, but Dr. Zaki Rakib, the current chairman, he was quoted saying, I can't tell you at this point whether the powder will be water soluble or not. This is something that we'll be uh, seeing. The other products that we have produced so far using our biofarming technology is water soluble, but this is not a promise I can make as of yet. The fact is, Palmia, Vinia, and Olivia, all their superfruits, they're all water soluble. So that just leaves cannabis that they're still trying to work on. And if they can manage to make cannabis water soluble, that completely eliminates the need for extractors. So that way they can go directly to beverage makers, edible makers, and cosmetic makers. So they have the blueprint to produce, they have now the soon to be means to produce, now they just need the distribution. And that was just covered on September 16th, as they just signed into an agreement with Batori Foods. And Batori Foods is one of the leading national suppliers of food ingredients in the USA today. And this partnership will help BioHarvest sell their product Vinia to consumer package producers while also giving them the opportunity to enter the US CBD hemp-based edible market. And they pledge to keep the THC under 0.3%. And because it's BioHarvest, you know they're gonna be able to hit that 0.3% every time. And this is just some of the customers that Batori Foods supplies food ingredients to on a daily basis. And they're expected to start working with Batori Foods as soon as quarter four of this year. And the one great thing about this stock is the volatility is almost non-existent. There's not that much volatility. In fact, it probably trades about $12,000 per day, which is very minimal, so it doesn't fluctuate up or down super drastically. For all you Canadians out there, the stock ticker symbol is BHSC, and for you Americans, it's on the OTC market, which is CNVCF. Thank you for watching. This is kind of a one-off video for me, so if you liked it, please like the video and comment down below what you think of BioHarvest. Anyways, take care everyone.